Hello, so in this video, we are going to now be moving on to the next stage, which is looking at, we've looked up, to, up until now, we've looked at the homogeneous case. So in other words, you know, I've got it written down here, hopefully you can see it, that, um, you know, the homogeneous case is basically where there's no constants hanging around at the end, you know, there's no constants hanging around at the end. And we can just write it like this, okay, so we can basically we can collapse this system down into looking something like this. Okay, but now we're going to look at the non-homogeneous case, which is in other words where we have these constants hanging around at the end, and that corresponds to a constant vector uh, when we kind of collapse the system down. Okay, now if you remember, if you remember that uh, we can transform a non-homogeneous case into a homogeneous case uh, by doing some kind of transformation. That transformation, if you remember, was a bit like translation. Yeah, it was x equals x minus our equilibrium point. Yeah, so in other words, we literally just shift all our points to be at the origin. Uh, if you want a kind of visual uh, analogy to this, perhaps if you just look at a linear graph, yeah, um, so this is x and this is y, and you're perhaps going through something like this, okay, and of course you'll cross at y equals mx plus c, right? So y equals mx plus c, the place where you cross is at c, okay? Well, you can make this, you can get rid of this plus c just simply by translating the whole graph down. Yeah, so in other words, you can translate the whole graph to look something like that, okay? So just literally by moving it down, by subtracting c from all our points, we can move it, move the graph such that it does go through the origin, and so therefore we call that homogeneous. So that's, that's kind of the whole point behind this translation. And you may be thinking, well, look, up until now, we have spoken at great length, actually, about how to solve homogeneous cases and, you know, what kind of things we can do with a homogeneous case. And you've even shown us, you said, look, you've even shown us how to convert a non-homogeneous case into a homo homogeneous case. So why now are you showing us how to deal with non-homogeneous cases? Well, the answer is that converting, thing, converting a non-homogeneous case into a homogeneous case is really, really useful. It will get us the, majority of the vast majority of information that we need. So in other words, it will get us probably about 90% of the information that we need. So for example, why have we converted in, you know, why are we looking at homogeneous cases? For example, when we were looking at equilibrium points and the types of equilibrium points that we could have. You know, we could have, you know, the types of nodes. We could have a stable or unstable node. And the homogeneous case would tell us that. Converting into a homogeneous case would tell us that. And then also when we're trying to spot solutions, but you know, the difficulty comes now when we're trying to spot solutions, okay? Because whilst the homogeneous case will give us a pretty good idea of a solution, okay, and what's happening, what the solution's actually doing, if we want to get the exact solution, right, um, we need to consider the non-homogeneous case. So in other words, we need to convert the back into the non-homogeneous case. Yeah, the way which I think about it is converting into the homogeneous case will give us 90% of the information. It'll give us a pretty good idea of what's going on with the system. All right. But if we want the full picture, we need to consider the non-homogeneous case as well. OK, and this is really what this is about. And actually, we're going to look at two methods which we can use um, to solve, you know, to solve a non-homogeneous system of equations. Um, but before I, would, before I do that, I want to actually draw parallels. So something which you've already met before in the course, because actually, if you've got any chance of, of understanding what, what I'm going to teach you in, the, in this video, and perhaps in another couple of videos, perhaps I'll do a video on each method, because there's two methods. I personally prefer the second one, um, but, you know, I'll do, a method, I'll do a video on each method, so kind of I'll break it up for you. Um, but really, this, this video is just more about putting the outlines in, basically. And so how we want to do it first, just basically introduce the parallel to... Um, the nth order linear ODE. So say for example, say for example, we had uh, y double dash, y double dash plus p y dash plus q y, okay, and that's equal to say some function in terms of x. All right. So basically, what I'm what I'm showing you now is, you know, this is this the this the linear nth order linear. This is um, second order because the highest derivative is the second derivative, so it's second order linear ODE. All right, um, you know, but it's not a system. So I'm just considering like a single, a single um, ODE, if you like. All right, and um, if you remember how we solved this was first of all, you know, this is non-homogeneous because the right-hand side isn't equal to zero. How we solved this was we first of all considered the homogeneous case. All right, the homogeneous case. So in other words, we considered the case when this thing, when this thing, was equal to zero. 
okay? And then basically we got the, you know, we, ba we basically got as much information as we possibly could out of this thing, the homogeneous case, all right? And then we kind of did a little bit of extra work to kind of get the full solution for the non-homogeneous case. All right, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. And, you know, the, the way which we could do it was, uh, you know, by various methods. Um, we, you know, but we had, we, had a, we had a solution to this homogeneous case and we called it the complementary solution. So let's, you know, we look, we're look looking at a, a function which is dependent on x, all right? So um, our, our complementary solution will be dependent on x as well. We call this a complementary solution. If you think, you know, complement, complement, it's not something which, uh, you know, it's not praising somebody or supporting somebody. It's complement means opposite in this case. If it's not the one with i, because i is the one where you sort of praise somebody or, um, you know, give somebody a compliment. This is complement with an e, and it just means the opposite case. And that kind of makes sense. You know, the opposite of a homogeneous case, of a non-homogeneous case, is the homogeneous case. So in other words, we're finding a solution to the opposite case. We're finding a solution to the homogeneous case. That makes sense that it's a complementary solution. And we denote that by YC. Okay, and because it's second order, because it's second order, we'll have then two, two a linear combination of two solutions, right? So uh, Y1 of X plus C2, Y2 of X. Okay, so the way which you'd solve that is just by kind of setting it up as an auxiliary equation, if you remember. Um, you know, you'd do, you'd say R squared plus P what, PR plus Q. Yeah, so this is an auxiliary equation, so it equals zero. And then that just becomes a quadratic, which then you can solve. You know, and obviously you'll have two roots, R1 and R2. And then you'll basically have, you know, a, a solution that looks, the kind of a solution, you know, each one of these roots corresponds to a solution. Um, and then you can plug that in and you get, you get that thing out basically. So a complementary solution would look a look a linear combination considering the two terms. All right, this is the complementary solution, and you know that would give us probably like I say ninety percent of the information. That would you know that's that, that's good enough to give us a good idea of what we need to do, uh, of what we need. But if we want the full solution, we need to basically look back. We need to basically try and convert back into a uh, non-homogeneous case. All right, so in other words, we need to convert back into this case, kind of come up with a, try and come up with a solution, kind of the way which I think of it, we use the complementary solution. We use the complementary solution for kind of inspiration, if you like. And we also look at the right-hand side, if you remember as well. And that basically allows us to come up with something called a particular solution, a particular solution. So in other words, we, we look at the... Um, we, we use what we found for the complementary solution and look at the right hand side kind of for inspiration and basically just kind of come up with a generalized pro you know, basically it's an educated guess what i'm trying to say <laughs> it's an educated guess based on what the right hand side looks like and what our complementary solution looks like okay and then therefore you know we have a we have a particular solution let's call it yp of x and that's going to look like something based on the right hand side so you use the right hand side you know this g of x function as inspiration OK, and then the general solution, y of x, will look something, will look something like, um, you know, the complementary solution added to the particular solution. Yeah. And actual fact, the way which we f another way which we find, you know, again, it's all in earlier videos, but uh, we actually use this complementary solution and plug it in on the right hand side on the left hand side and sort of look at the right hand side. This is what I'm trying to say. Uh, we, we plug it in on the left hand side. We plug this complementary solution in the left-hand side, so y double find the second derivative, first derivative is complementary solution, and plug it in the left-hand side, and kind of fiddle around with it and make it look like something on the right-hand side. And essentially, we just make an educated guess and make it look like something that resembles what we want it to look like. Okay, and then therefore our general solution will be our complementary solution plus our particular solution. All right. So in other words, we put things back together, and if you like, by putting them back together, we're strengthening it. Yeah, we're strengthening our general solution. If we just had, if we just had um, the complementary solution, like I say, that'll give us probably 90% of the way, all right? But that extra 10% comes from adding the particular solution to our overall general solution, all right? So this is kind of the whole idea of what we're doing here. Now, okay, so what is the solution going to look like then? Well, what's the solution to the homogeneous case going to look like? So for the homogeneous case, homogeneous case, our solution, if you remember, could be written as a linear combination of all of our solutions, right? So C1, X1 of T, so T, X1 is our first solution, all right, plus 
C2, X2 of T, so X2 is now our second solution, uh, and we just multiply by some constant at the beginning. And we go right the way through to our nth variable, or our nth solution, Xn of T. Okay, so that's what, our, that's what a homogeneous solution would look like. Okay, so what then is the non-homogeneous case going to look like? Well, I've just shown you, with the analogy of the, you know, the nth order linear um, ODE, that that a, a non-homogeneous case is basically the solution to the homogeneous case, which we call the, uh, the complementary solution, plus some particular solution, which is based on, it's basically a guess, um, but, you know, we can, um, you know, using this complementary solution, find uh, a guess for the, what the particular solution would be looking like, okay? So it makes sense then that the solution to the non-homogeneous case is going to look like the homo, you know, it's going to be the the this one, the complementary solution with the homo the solution to the homogeneous case, right, which is this one, so C one X one of T plus C two X two of T, right the way through to C N, yeah. X N of T. So exactly the same as the homogeneous case. That's that's the first part. This is the Y C, yeah? The solution to the homogeneous case. But plus then some particular solution. And I'm going to just call that particular solution V of T, and it's going to be a bit vector, basically. So this particular solution is basically the thing which we're going to be looking for. So like I say, you know, the solution to the non-homogeneous case, this is probably, you know, the, the homo, um, you know, the non -homo the solution to the non-homogeneous case. If we can find a solution to the homogeneous case, which is this bit, okay, um, if we can find a solution to the homogeneous case, then we'll get probably 90% of the solution. That's what the majority of this solution is, yeah? But there is a little bit on the end, like an extra 10% on the end, which kind of just finishes off and completes the overall solution. That's known as the particular solution. And that's the thing. The solution at the end, this V of T term at the end, is the thing which we want to find, essentially. Okay, And we're going to find it again by these methods in this video. Now, the first method that we're going to look at is something called diagonalization. Diagonalization. We're not going to look at it in this video, but I'm just going to outline it. So the first method that we now look like, so going back now to our uh, linear system, of a non-homogeneous case. The first case we're going to look like is a diagonalization, which is going to basically be looking at the the um, you know our, our matrix of coefficients, so a, b, c, d, say, um, our matrix of coefficients, and we're going to pull out some eigenvalues and some eigenvectors from that. Okay, so eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So this is u. Let's say this is v. Okay, so we're going to pull out some eigenvalues and eigenvectors. All right. And then we're basically going to try and diagonalize the system. Now, if I show you in the last video, in the last video, we showed you how to diagonalize. I showed you how to diagonalize a um, a system. So we're going to basically base on that um, fact and try and come up with a, an interesting kind of way of of, of showing, uh, of kind of you know, solving our a non a non homogeneous case. Um, the second the second method is something called variation of parameters. So variation of parameters, right? And um, essentially, this is kind of the most familiar case. This is actually the case which I kind of um, prefer, although there's no reason for kind of relatively small, for relatively small um, system, there's no reason why you should favour one over the other, all right? Because in actual fact, if we end up with a with a coefficient matrix that is has some special properties, for example, if it's real and symmetric, we call that Hermitian. And, um, you know, that actually makes the system really, really easy to solve. So if you can spot that our matrix of coefficients is really quite a nice matrix, um, that's fine. Equally, you may be able to, you know, variation parameters. There's a lot more calculation in variation parameters. But in general, it's kind of, it's not using matrices so much. But there is integration and things like that involved. So it's just really whichever one you prefer. For small systems, like I say, there's no reason why we should prefer one over the other.